In this video, I'm going to go over the advanced point layout features. And what I mean by advanced is how you can work with radii and arcs on your PMD200 layout tool. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a drawing that looks like this. Now this drawing is in millimeters, so I'm going to be switching in this video from my units to be in millimeters. But this drawing is a great example of what you might see on a PDF that might seem complicated, but because all the dimensions are given to you, you can certainly do this with a PMD200. Um, this is, I believe, a reflected ceiling plan of a pool area. And what I'm going to do is zoom in here. Let me zoom into this bottom here. I'm going to lay out this bottom corner of the plan to give you an example of how you can do these arcs using the PMD200. If you notice that this intersection right here and this line that's going this way and also this line that's going this way, let me show you how I've stationed my PMD200. What I've done is I've stationed my PMD200 with R1 representing that intersection that I just showed on my PDF with this line going to the right as you saw on the PDF as well. Let me show you one more time. This is where R1 is going and here is the direction in which I told the tool that it is looking. And of course if you need help with stationing your tool feel free to go back to the stationing video to understand how stationing works. But now what I need to do is I need to be able to lay out this arc this line, this arc, etc. throughout this entire plan. I'm going to show you on one or two of them so you can get the full picture and do this on a large scale if you so need to. So let me begin by putting in a couple of dimensions. From my R1 point that you saw on my PMT200, I need to quickly pull this arc, which has two points to it right here and right here, my initial point being 1,222 millimeters south of that first point, and the second point of the arc being 1663 to the right of that and 1054 to the north of that point. So I'm going to type in all these three dimensions very briefly onto my unit to get the two points of my arc. What I've done is I've clicked on R1. It is my current 00, zero and I'm going to make sure that I go new point. And on my orange line, I'm going to be going south 1222 millimeters. I'm going to say enter. I'm going to make sure it's going the right direction, and I'll say confirm. Now the tool is going to naturally turn there. I'm going to disregard that and not lay it out yet because I want to get all my points drawn in here. So the next point I need to do is 1,663 to the right of that point and another 1,054 up. So I'm going to get this point in and this point in as well, and I'll draw those in really quick. Okay, so what I'm going to do to simplify this for myself is I'm going to come back to P3, and I will delete this point. I'll say OK. And now I have the two points that represent that arc you saw on my PDF. Now on this arc, I have a radius of 2,141. That's a very important number because now on my plan, I can draw that in. By going on P3, I will go to an arc with two points. Now the two points, the end point is going to be P2, so it has that correct. Now if you look at my plan, it's going the wrong direction. I need the arc to be this arc represented here. So I'm going to make sure that my arc is the one that's being used with C1, C1 being the center of any of one of the arcs that's associated with it. You can see that this is an arc and this is an arc associated with it with potential circles for the center being here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate that yes, the end point C is P2. Yes, the center of the circle, if it was a circle, is C1, but we need to be C1 on the right. C1 on the right, right? This is the part of the circle I want. So now that the arc is made, now my question is, how many segments of this arc do I want? And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and keep this. I'll make sure that each point that's segmented on this arc is 200 millimeters each, so that way I can get a nice clean layout of this arc. I will press confirm and say yes to creating with 11 segments. And now you can see I have a list of points in here that I can now lay out that represent my arc. I'll just go point to point to point to point as I'm ready to lay them out, all listed right here. So that's how easy it is to lay out a simple arc. And of course, from here, I, would, I could go ahead and just type in my dimensions to get these next points listed on here as I need to. But now let me show you one other example. As you can see from this point, I have this circle over here where I'm getting dimensions to that center point. It tells me how far up from this line I need to go to get to that center and how far over. Let me get the center point labeled in there and let's talk about how we can lay out circles like this.
So now that I have my center point and I know what my radius is, I can simply go to radius, indicate the radius of 575. I'll go ahead and keep my segment length of 200. And now before I go on, the tool is asking me to select the start and end point of my radius, or basically I'm going to be making an arc. And I'll make this arc as big as possible. I'll just go ahead and click this point as my start point and this point here as an end point. Now it looks small right now, but notice I can switch the side to, it, to have it indicate all of the points. Technically I made an arc, but obviously in reality I've made my circle. I'll go ahead and confirm those points and accept these 18 segments. And now just like the arc, I can lay out this entire circle as needed. Now let me show you one more option you have with this that you might not see as common, but certainly is an option for you. Let me use R1 as my temporary 0, 0 just for the sake of this example. One other option you have with arc and two points is the ability to do what we call an offset. Now what this offset means is it's going to ask you for obviously an endpoint of your arc. So I'll go ahead and use P16 as my endpoint to keep that center point prevalent in this discussion. And so now you can see I have an arc between P16 and R1. The difference with an offset versus the radius option is what the tool does is put a center point between P16 and R1, and then it asks you what the offset is from the center point to the apex of the arc. And in this case, the offset is at, set at 872, which I can alter if I want to. Let me go ahead and change this. I went ahead and make the offset 400 millimeters, and you can see that that apex of the arc shrank down to the bottom. If you ever put a value in here that cannot work, the tool will warn you that it cannot work. As you can see here, invalid input, I attempted to put in 10,000 millimeters, which obviously is not possible to put a true circle between those two points. So if this applies to you where you have a point in the middle of two points and you know the apex of the arc between those two points is a certain offset, you can use this, confirm those points, and accept those segments. And now I have all these points I can lay out now as well. So those three ways hopefully will help you with any arc layouts or circle layouts that you need to do. I hope this video has helped you to understand the advanced portions of laying out with the PMD200. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And of course, please share any experiences you have with the tool.